uh, let's uh, welcome the next talker, which is Mark Callahan. So he will talk about lots of things related to RockCV. So I, I have speaker notes. I have been doing many talks this year without speaker notes, so I'm a little bit sur happily surprised. Uh, <laughs> I'm a small data engineer. I don't don't think Domas is here. Uh, we've been trying to popular make uh, popular uh, small data as an alternative to uh, OLTP. Um, we're a bit jealous of all the attention that big data gets. Um, so. I'm here to speak about uh, just more uh, good news about uh, the RocksDB family of storage engines. So RocksDB, Mongo Rocks, and MyRox. Uh, Mongo Rocks is the RocksDB storage engine for MongoDB. Uh, MyRox is the RocksDB storage engine for, for MySQL. I've been working on MySQL since 2006. Um, until a few years back, all of that was on InnoDB. Uh, I've stopped working on InnoDB, and, and now my focus is, is on the RocksDB family. Um, so uh, if I try to break down things that we achieved in 2016, and then the next slide is what we accomplished, what we will accomplish in 2017. So really, the highlight for 2016 is efficient performance. Um, when the RocksDB project got started, the, the team was focused on performance. The use cases that they were targeting were um, performance. Um, with uh, the use cases, the initial use case we're targeting for MyRox, um, it is uh, efficient performance. The tier, and this has been disclosed previously, the tier is many tens of petabytes of storage. Um, so we care about a lot about efficiency, given the size of the tier. Um, the, the goal for this year was good or good enough read efficiency, uh, better write efficiency, and the best space efficiency. And it's probably easy to think of this in terms of compar comparing it to a B tree like InnoDB. When the project started, we had some discussions about you know, can we be specific about what the goals are for the early evaluation to justify continuing to work on it? And really, at that time, all we cared about was space efficiency. We had uh, previously deployed uh, InnoDB compression, and that compressed the tier almost in half. Uh, the early goal here was to compress the tier by another factor of two. So we wanted to get four times better uh, we wanted to use one fourth the space of uncompressed InnoDB, um, and then we were—I at least personally was vague about how much uh, read performance we could sacrifice in pursuit of better space efficiency. Well, it turns out we're not sacrificing anything. Um, by read efficiency, you can think of this in, in terms of response time or throughput. So, are we willing to sacrifice? Uh, getting a worse response time, which you might get with an LSM, um, to get the other, the better write and space efficiency. By better write efficiency, uh, you can think of this in two ways. One is either we support, uh, we're faster on write heavy workloads, or from a storage perspective, we write less back to storage per transaction compared to a B tree. And then finally, best space efficiency, we use the least amount of space compared to other algorithms. Now, what this translates to is that we will use less SSD for a given workload compared to a B tree because we have the best space efficiency. With better write efficiency, we can use lower endurance SSD, and it will last just as long as higher endurance SSD with a B tree. Uh, these are a big deal when you have a lot of small data. Um, now, it turns out in practice uh, that in many cases we are seeing better read efficiency, meaning we are getting better throughput with MyRox than with uh, WireTiger for, or better throughput compared to InnoDB, and then if we 
go over to the MongoDB side, we are beating WireTiger on some workloads. And it, um, I don't have time to explain it, but performance is complex. And the summary is we tend to cache data better. We cache more data than the alternatives. So the hit rates are better in memory, and we get better performance. Um, so the, the plans for 2017, I've been running a lot of workloads. I have not been publishing much data this year. Um, in part, I was speaking at a few events, and I didn't necessarily want to make unhappy the people putting on the events. Um, I am actually going to publish a lot more data next year. So my expectations are partially true today. We are going to be comparable in performance. And on the left-hand side, I should have written Mon MongoRox. MongoRox is going to be comparable to WireTiger. We are faster on some workloads. It's faster on other workloads. It's, WireTiger is not strictly faster than MongoRox. And we will be strictly faster, you know, greater that my code there is greater than. We will be strictly faster than MMAP. We are today. Um, on the MySQL side, I compare MyRox usually to MyS uh, InnoDB without compression. The InnoDB with compression is not performant. MyRox has no problem beating it on every workload that I've run today. Uh, there's a lot of performance problems that won't be fixed in InnoDB with page compression. So the target is comparing MyRox to compre uh, uncompressed InnoDB. Um, I'm happy when we match the performance of uncompressed InnoDB because that, you know, if I'm getting four times or five times better compression is it using one-fourth to one-fifth the space of InnoDB and matching it in performance, that's, that's a big win for me. Uh, and then the last one, uh, MyRox versus TokuDB. My brother used to work at the company. I personally know many other people who work there. I've been hesitant. They're a small company back when it was TokuTech. So I was hesitant to publish. Um, I think it's necessary at this point because people ask me, how does MyRox compare to TokuDB? And I tell them, trust me. You might not know me, but trust me, it's faster. Um, it's time for me to put up. And so that's going to happen next year. We have a lot more. Uh, there's someone helping me now up in Seattle. So we have a lot more effort going on. We are running YCSB. We're running TPCC MySQL. The most important thing is we want to know about customer workloads, real workloads, not Facebook workloads. Um, we're happy to learn and work with people uh, to get them more performant. Now, I did not mention you know, if we go back to the previous slide and this slide, the real big win for 2016, the achievement, is we convinced Percona and Maria DB to get on the bandwagon of Myrox. So they announced their plans to include Myrox in their distributions, meaning it will be professionally supported, it will be documented, you will have people who, who can provide services for it. Um, if I think about, you know, I can't really speak for them, but my plans for 2017 is for MyRox to be available in these distributions, at least in beta form. So uh, it will be much easier for non-Facebook users to get MyRox. Now, um, at a high level, there are, I spend a lot of time trying to explain performance. So why is read, write, and space efficiency better, or why are write and space efficiency better with RocksDB compared to a B tree? And in some cases, why is read efficiency better? Now for space efficiency, the big problem for a B tree, subject to random updates, is that the leaf pages will be uh, one half to two thirds full over time, meaning uh, one third to one half of the the data on disk or on SSD is garbage. It's it's not data. It's just uh, empty space. If you're using compression with InnoDB, InnoDB uses fixed page sizes on disk. So if you have a 16, uh, if you're using key block size equals eight, and and you are targeting two x compression. Uh, you will have a 16 kilobyte page in memory with an eight kilobyte page on disk. Uh, if you compress that 16 kilobytes in memory to five kilobytes, 
you're still writing eight kilobytes out to disk, so you're wasting compression. Uh, per row metadata in InnoDB is, is uh, 13 bytes, the rollback pointer and the transaction ID. That's uncompressed. It's uncompressible. You can think of it as a random number. Uh, most of the per row metadata is compressed to zero bytes with RocksDB. Key prefix encoding. Um, we benefit from this in, for compressed blocks stored in the OS page cache or on disk as well as uncompressed blocks stored in the RocksDB block cache. So keys take up less space. Um, all of these are reasons why we are using much less space for the same amount of data with RocksDB. Write efficiency. Well, the first thing is if your database is one-fourth or one-fifth the size of, uh, of a B tree, you have less data to write back. The B tree is four times or five times larger. You have more data to write back. Uh, another important thing is that we run, we target I.O. heavy workloads. Uh, we configure our servers so that the working set, the database working set, does not fit in cache. If you have fast storage and the working set fits in cache, you have too much RAM. If you have fast storage, use it, which means we want to do reads and writes to and from storage. Um, the problem, though, with a B tree, if the working set doesn't fit in cache, is that page reads will push dirty pages out of cache too soon. The worst case with a B tree is when you're writing back a dirty page that only has one modified row. If we think about write amplification in that case, it's the size of the page versus the size of the row. If you have a 16 kilobyte row uh, page and a uh, 128 byte row, um, then you're looking at a factor of 128 write amplification. Double that with a double write buffer to get torn page protection from InnoDB. So um, I.O. heavy configuration or tuning is, le can lead to a lot of write amplification with a B tree. Now read efficiency. If you look at the LSM algorithm, you're going to look at all the places where you have to search for data and assume that you might be doing more CP, using more CPU and more I.O. for reads. Um, but it's not always the case. And we have less data, so we have less data to cache. Uh, we also put more data in cache because of the key prefix encoding. The Bloom filter saves a lot of work, especially if you're doing uh, workload that is looking for keys that don't exist. And we've had some of those workloads where we wasted a lot of I.O. for keys that did not exist. Um, an interesting point is that when you spend uh, less on writes, you have more I.O. capacity to use for reads. And then finally, secondary, non-unique secondary index maintenance is read-free. So just here's, I've shared this previously, uh, Linkbench, an I.O. bound configuration. The database was many times the size of RAM. Um, the first number is transactions per second. We get more from compressed MyRox compared to uncompressed InnoDB and compressed InnoDB. That's a bonus to me, the first column there, where we are actually getting more throughput. If we look at read efficiency, how many uh, storage reads per transaction do we do? They're all doing a little bit more than one read per transaction, so it's a toss-up there. Uh, the third column, uh, how many kilobytes are written to storage per transaction? Um, this is measured via I.O. stat, and InnoDB is doing between, well, almost 15 to 20 times more data written back to storage per transaction. Um, so that's a significant uh, difference, a significant savings for MyRox. Fourth column is CPU overhead. How much CPU time per transaction? They're all about the same. So, you know, theory might predict spending more CPU uh, from an LSM compared to a B tree, um, but here we're actually not using more CPU. Uh, database size, uncompressed InnoDB was about four times larger than uh, MyRox, and compressed InnoDB was about two times larger than MyRox. Uh, finally, the last column is the 99th percentile update response time. So it's one of the more popular transactions in Linkbench and MyRox uh, wins. 
So this is how I try to present performance. I try to explain it. You know, if we think of throughput as performance in the, the first column, hardware efficiency in the middle columns, and then finally quality of service in the last column. Um, so but this isn't a, an odd result. I see this in many cases. Similar throughput from MyRox, better hardware efficiency, better quality of service. Um, here's an example where I, I, I mentioned that when you save on writes, when you use less bandwidth or capacity for writes, you have more for reads. I ran the workload with a similar configuration in terms of database size versus RAM, but I, I went from fast SSD to slower storage. So the fast SSD could do several hundred thousand uh, operations per second. The slow SSD could do 10,000 operations per second. And the disk array could do between one and 2,000 operations per second. The interesting thing here is the throughput ratio between MyRox and InnoDB, and this is InnoDB without compression, the throughput difference uh, increases as we move from faster to slower storage. So with the disk array, I.O. is much more of a bottleneck than it is on the fast SSD. With the disk array, MyRox relative to InnoDB does much better than it did on the, even though it was better on all of them, the difference was most significant on the slowest storage. Um, so we have many landing pages. We recently added, uh, added one from MyRox. Um, I blog a lot, performance results and efficiency results. Um, I'm happy to interact with people who are disappointed or, or happy about the results they get from, from my rocks. Uh, I spend a lot of time trying to explain results, so I'm willing to help pe other people explain the results that they get. Um, and thank you for listening to me. <laughs>